Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> I thought I'd do an, uh, a video today <clears throat> discussing SSDs and uh, optimizing uh, them in Linux. <clears throat> now, it, it's SSDs have or solid state drives have been out for a while, and there is a lot of information available. <clears throat> But so much of that information is conflicting. You would think after all this time that there'd be some standardized or accepted method of optimizing an SSD within Linux, but there really isn't at this point in time. If you take a look at the information that's available, <clears throat> there are uh, lots of websites uh, giving you information on optimizing your SSD. Uh, but figuring out what's right for you is not always easy. Now, this particular website, Easy Linux Tips Project, um, basically is telling you that discards should not be used, not advised, especially not on a swap file. <clears throat> don't ever add it to the line for the swap petition as that's already being trimmed automatically by the system by default during the boot process. The disadvantage of the discard method is that it may cause the system to slow down a lot because it forces the system to apply trim instantly on every file deletion. So basically discard is a uh, a, a ongoing uh, trim process. It's enabled permanently on your drive when you use discard in your fstab file. So <clears throat> when you read this it says not, it, not advised. Um, if you look at let's see Debian. If you look at Debian's wiki on SSD optimization Basically, it says add the uh, no A time or rela time mount option to disable disk writes whenever a file is read. <clears throat> Since Linux kernel 2.6.30 rela time is the default, this improves file system read performance for both SSDs and HDDs. Uh, first, read the warning at the top of this page. If desirable, enable the discard file system options for automatic online trim. The warning at the top of the page says, Some SSD models have bugs that result in data corruption when used in certain ways. For this reason, the Linux ATA driver maintains a blacklist of certain things it shouldn't do on certain drive firmware combinations. In particular, many drives, including Samsung, Micron, Crucial, have problems with discard. Now make sure you review the latest version of that file for your model. If it's present, make sure it's also the version of the kernel in the version of the kernel you intend to run. Um, so, discard is generally frowned upon versus other ways of enabling trim. Now here's where it gets crazy. If I look at, I'm running on this computer, Manjaro and Ubuntu. If I look at Manjaro, I'm sorry, this is Ubuntu. If I look at Ubuntu, this is how Ubuntu set up my FSTAB file. There is no mention of any relative time, no A time, discard, nothing. This is my FSTAB file on Manjaro. Well they have no A time and discard. Not only on my ext4 petition but they've also included discard on my swap petition which if you, re if you read and believe the other information that's available on the websites that is a no-no. That's frowned upon. So, where do you go from here? What does the normal average Linux user believe as far as setting up your SSD 
to improve the lifespan of your SSD and also make it operate properly on a daily basis. Now the one thing that everybody seems to agree on is you should update the firmware on your SSDs which I did yesterday through Windows because most SSD manufacturers don't have the ability to update uh, your your SSD firmware from within Linux. If I look at SanDisk they have a really nice dashboard but it's it's only usable in in um, in Windows. Uh, Windows it adds a dashboard and you can update your firmware right from the dashboard. Uh, OWC um, they uh, do have the ability to to uh, update your firmware in Windows and I guess you can do it through Apple's boot camp assistant. I did it through Windows yesterday uh, because I do have an OWC SSD. I have four SSDs in this particular machine. I also have a couple of crucial SSDs. I have the uh, MX, I have the, the M550 and the M500. Um, the firmware update procedure is actually different for both. It's a different procedure on both. The M500 was a little bit easier than the M550. Um, I did it through Windows yesterday, so the firmware is updated on the drives. Uh, and that's one thing you should do. Just look up your manufacturer, find your drive, and follow the manufacturer's suggestions, uh, recommendations for updating firmware. So basically what it comes down to if you look in Arch Linux different file systems have continuous trim periodic trim ability ext4 butterfs most of them have the ability to do either continuous using discard or periodic using fs trim now manjaro sets it up with discard which is a continuous trim. Uh, now you can find out whether or not your your SSD supports trim by running a command in terminal. Now if you open a terminal <clears throat> and you type sudo space hdparm space dash capital I space and then the device designation for your drive in my case I'm going to use SDB right now because that's the drive that I'm on so if you press that enter your password and then scroll down you can see the line you're looking for is data set management trim supported and it'll say not supported if it's not supported so you want to check that now data set management trim is supported on this drive that's the SDB I also as I said I have four so let's do SDA SDA says set data set management trim supported limit one block that's kind of unusual I've seen eight and sixteen but this drive says one block that's the SDA drive so let's try SDC data set management trim supported limit eight blocks and if I try SDD data set management trim supported limit 16 blocks so all four of my SSDs support trim okay so what does that <clears throat> bring us to now <clears throat> if you go through all of that information I can't tell you how to set up your system that's entirely up to you but let's go through some of the information so let's open up the text file and let's open up a terminal <clears throat> okay so if you want to do a, a trim command manually this is the, the, the command you'll run now I've never run trim on this particular petition um, where Ubuntu Mate is installed so let's 
run the trim command. Now because I've never run it, <clears throat> it came back with 49.5 gigabytes trimmed. Uh, because I hadn't run it before. Now if I run it again, it'll come back with zero because it just did it. That's how you would manually run trim on your SSD. <clears throat> and that is on the root partition. So you can see that's if you had a home partition you would designate it. Uh, but I have root and home combined so that's the command that I would use. Now as your system runs uh, that if you keep running that command you're going to get different values depending on how long between commands. So that's how you would run trim manually. Now you can also add FS trim command to your RC local file which would enable trim every time you boot your machine. If you don't boot your machine very often then you wouldn't want to use this but if you boot up many times then that would this command would run uh, that trim command every time. So if we take this command here and we edit our RC local file you can put a trim command in there and it would be basically uh, FS trim uh, you wouldn't need to put the dash V for verbose so you would just add FS trim space forward slash for your root petition and then save the file so that's if you want it would want to run that um, at boot. Now I don't reboot the machine very often so I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> In order to enable trim automatically you would bring up your fstab file and spread this out a little bit. Okay, so you would bring up your fstab file and you would add discard and NOAA time to, to your ext4 petitions. Now, most information I have read uh, recommends against putting discard on a swap petition. So I'm going to go with the prevailing opinion and just add discard and NOAA time to my root petition. So if we just go to the beginning there, discard, comma, no a time, comma, and then we would save that. File, save. So now we've got real time or ongoing trim on our root petition and that's the way I'm going to leave that. The, the next uh, uh, subject is swappiness. Now swappiness basically is how much RAM do you consume, physical RAM do you consume before you go over to your swap file. The default is 60 so basically if you don't touch that your system would normally set your swappiness to 60 meaning that when your RAM is 60 percent consumed it starts writing to your swap file. Ubuntu recommends a swappiness value of 10. Debian recommends a swappiness value of 1. Arch recommends a swappiness value of 10. Now, 
I'm going to go with 10. The reason is, if you get too close to consuming all of your RAM, all of your physical RAM, you run the risk of an out of RAM condition. So I think the happy medium would be t setting your swappiness to 10. And that's what I would recommend that you do. So in order to set your, your swappiness, you can do it a couple different ways. First of all, um, if you copy in this command in terminal, you can find out what your system is currently at. And you can see this cat space forward slash PROC forward slash SYS forward slash VM forward slash swappiness. Now my swappiness is currently set to 10. It was at 60. This on a fresh Ubuntu install, it was set to 60. I reset it to 10, and I'll show you how I did that. Now you can set it manually. If you if you only want to set your swappiness manually, then this would be the command that you use: sudo space sysctl space vm dot swappiness equals 10. That will manually set it, but it's going to revert to 60 on the next boot. So I'm not sure if there's any value to that at all. But to set your swappiness permanently, you're going to edit a file. And so it's going to be sudo, I'll, I'll put these in the show notes. going to bring up the file with leaf pad scroll to the bottom you can see where I added VM dot swappiness equals 10 you're going to add that line it probably won't be there uh, when you bring up the file but at the end of the file put a space and then add that line VM dot swappiness space equals space 10 so at the end you can see uh, and then now you'll want to reboot after you change that so vm dot swappiness equals 10 save the file reboot put in that first cat pros uh, command and you'll find that your swappiness has been set to 10 so my uh, my system as I told you I'm setting it to with discard to my root petition in my fstab file and I'm setting swappiness to 10 and I'm updating my firmware through the manufacturer's website for the SSD based on all of this information you'll have to decide how you want to set your system up I gave you some information in order to be able to make that decision the question really is, do you use discard on your uh, fstab file? I'm going with using discard and NOAA time on my, uh, on my root petition, not on the swap. I'm also changing my swappiness to 10, and I am updating the firmware on my SSDs. So guys, that is the latest information that I have on SSDs. I hope that made some sense of it for you. Uh, thank you for stopping by the channel today. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Take care.